Hi, my name is Dan Rutland from the University of Florida Agricultural and Biological Engineering Department. Today I'm going to be talking about evapotranspiration irrigation controllers, or ET controllers for short. In 2005, it was estimated that 1,100 people per day were moving to Florida. With increased population comes an increase in water demand. One area for potential water savings is irrigation of the home lawn. With proper installation and programming of an ET controller, you could start to use water more efficiently. So first, I'm going to talk about how ET controllers work, and then I'm going to talk about the different types of ET controllers, and finally, I'm going to help you program your ET controller. Evapotranspiration, or ET, is the process by which plants take up and give off water to survive. Factors such as temperature, solar radiation or intensity of the sun, and wind speed affect the rate at which ET occurs. Evapotranspiration irrigation controllers attempt to estimate or measure the loss of water in the root zone of the representative plant. For example, let us say that yesterday was a really hot day outside with a strong breeze blowing. Our soil is going to be losing a lot of water both due to evaporation and our plants. The ET irrigation controller will measure these weather conditions, estimate how much water was lost from the soil yesterday, and replace the amount that was lost by determining an irrigation system runtime. Once the irrigation time rolls around, the soil is replenished and the process starts again for the next day. There are many different brands of ET controllers, but almost all of them work in different ways. It is important to understand the differences between how the controllers work to select the one that best suits your landscape. There are three basic types of ET controllers. Historical, standalone, and signal based. Historical based ET controllers use ET averages from previous years to estimate current ET. These controllers require the input of your regional information to calculate ET. Standalone ET controllers use on site sensors to gather weather data and calculate ET. These sensors have to be installed in the landscape or on the side of a house. Where you choose to locate your sensor is important. The sensor must not be obstructed by the roof or placed near outdoor appliances or structures that emit heat such as air conditioning units, dryer vents, sidewalks, and driveways. For best results, the sensor should be placed in a relatively open area that has adequate airflow and is not obstructed by trees. Improper placement of the sensor could lead to over or inadequate irrigation. Signal-based ET controllers rely on a weather service to send ET values to the controller using different types of communication technology. The weather service calculates ET by gathering regional weather conditions from weather stations in your area. Once the ET values are calculated, they are sent to your controller via pager or cell phone technology. I'm now going to overview two brands of ET controllers the Toro IntelliSense and the Weathermatic SL1600. The Toro IntelliSense is a signal-based controller, while the Weathermatic SL1600 is an on-site controller. Please select the controller you would like to learn to program.